Okay, I'm going to look at this example that he has on page uh, one, I don't know, 135 about going to Disney World. And I'm going to show you the cheater way um, to solve these. What I've done is I've set up a contingency table that's basically got the two variables or the two things that I'm looking for or studying, Disney World and Bush Gardens. Um, and that people had one or two choices. They could go to Bush Gardens or not go to Bush Gardens. They could go to Disney World or not go to Disney World. So if I dig through the problem, it tells me the survey revealed that 120 went to Disney World, 100 went to Bush Gardens, so I'm simply going to do my, like, what you have versus, you know, what you've got. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, okay, of the yeses, okay, I know that what happened was 60 people went to Disney World, which is great. So down here, I now know that 60% went to Disney World. Well, the other thing that I know is that all probabilities have to equal 1. So, if 60% went, and I know that all probabilities have to equal 1, then I only have one choice. That means 60% went to Disney World, and over here, 40% did not. So, these are my, right here, these are my Disney World columns. Okay, hope you guys are following me. All right, now I'm going to look at Bush Gardens. These over here are going to be my Bush Gardens rows. Yeses and nos. The one thing I know is that whatever I end up with here plus this has to equal 1. So let's see what the problem tells me. It tells me that the probability of a tourist going to Bush Gardens, which is a yes, is 50%. Well, remember, the total of the probability has to be 50%. I mean, has to be 1. So the 50% plus the 50% gives me a total of 1. So what I've got to do now is this is almost like solving some kind of Sudoku puzzle or something is that I've got to fill in the center of my contingency table so that that column right here equals 60, that column equals 40, okay? this row equals 50, and that row equals 50%. So all I need is one more piece of information and I can do the whole thing. And he gives it to you on the kind of buried on page 135 when he says the explanation is that many tourists visited both attractions and are being counted twice a check of the survey responses revealed that 60 out of 200 sampled did in fact visit both so that 60 out of 200 people went to both so if I take 60 what I want divided by what I have, which is 200, that gives me 30%. So now where do those, where does that 30% go? Well, they were the yes, yes people, weren't they? So that means they went, yes, they went to Disney World. Yes, they went to Bush Gardens. So I'm going to put them right here in this box. So now I'm going to say right here is 0.30. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now all you have to do is add. I know, I have to know that 30 plus something equals 50%. So all I have to do here is say, okay, 0 0.20. I also know that here, this has to equal 60%. So there's only one number that's going to do it right here. That's another 30%. And then last but not least, I know that this row has to equal 50% and there's only one number that will do it there. So now if I double check myself, I see that 30% plus 30% equals 60, 20% plus 20% equals 40. I'm good over here because 30 
plus 20 is 50, 30 plus 20 is 50, my final check is 50% plus 50% gives me a 1, 60% plus 40% gives me a 1. So now my contingency table is drawn and now I can solve the problem without having to do <coughs> excuse me, a whole lot else. Because what, they, what he wants to know is, what is the probability, what is the probability that he or she visited either, either Bush Gardens or Disney World? So let's see who we want. I want all the people who said yes to Disney World. I also want all the people who said yes to Bush Gardens. Right? So I've got all the people who said yes to Bush Gardens and all the people who said yes to Disney World. Except remember the number one party rule is you can't double dip. Well, you can't double dip here. Look what happens right here. Didn't I count those people twice? Remember that when I came through and I picked up all of my yeses here, and I picked up all my yeses here, these guys got counted coming and going. They got counted in this 60%. They got counted in that 50%. So what ends up happening is I end up taking this 60% down here plus the 50% here. Okay, but I'm at 1.10. These are the guys that I counted twice, so I have to take them back out. So that's where he gets 0 0.60 plus 0 0.50 equals 0 0.80. Remember that when you use the contingency table like this, what you end up with is look for what did I circle twice? What did I count twice? Anybody who got circled going and coming, that's what you subtract back out. <clears throat> I've got a couple more problems like this that I'll post for you. But hopefully in the meantime, this will uh, give you at least a little bit of help. Thanks. Bye.